Hi guys, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Okay, that's the preamble over with. Let's get into the introduction. The last video I released, I looked at the possibility of cheating, and that video attracted a lot of comments, most of which actually didn't refer to that video, but to another YouTuber's video. Now I have to admit, I have yet to watch that particular video in full, but I have seen some of it. Now, the comments I got was regarding rigged MM. In fact, a lot of people complained. So, I listened to those comments, I read those comments, and I put a poll on my community tab, asking if they want me to sort of look into this in a bit more detail. And the answer to that question was, yes, please. Now, before I get into the body of the subject within this video, I've got to point out a few things. Firstly, this is not a video in response to Droodle's video on Rigged MM. Look, I have to mention Droodle's video, and I'm even going to post a link to that video, because this video is not a response or a right to reply. I am merely referencing another YT video I have to give credit to that content creator. Because if I don't, I could be accused of both plagiarism or even copyright, neither of which applies here, by the way. I also have to forewarn you, this is gonna be a lengthy video. It's gonna be no drama and there are no extreme conclusions. So if you're expecting that, then I'm sorry, I'm gonna disappoint you. The other thing I want to point out is that this video is not intended or nor does it seek to poo-poo Droodles or is video. This is not an attempt to belittle Droodles. It's not an attempt to belittle the video he released. Far, far from it. At the end of the day, everyone is entitled to their own views and their own opinions. And we're all entitled to draw whatever conclusions we wish from reviewing the available source material and then bringing in our own experiences to that to try and make some sense of things. There is certainly no harm in coming to a different conclusion to others because at the end of the day, if that's what you think, if that's what you believe and you base that upon an objective review of the subject matter, then that is completely up to you. So please do not think that this video is some kind of piggybacking on a more successful YouTuber or a more successful video um, or some kind of drama in order to garner views or call somebody out because it's not. I wasn't going to do this video, but I've had a lot of comments. I've had a lot of DMs and I, I read those comments. And I, as I said, I did a poll on my community tab and it seems that a lot of people want me to do a video like this. Furthermore, many of you out there will know that I am what is called an official CC or community contributor for World of Tanks Blitz. Oh, look, there is a lot of misunderstanding as to what this actually means. And many others, certain YouTubers out there, have made statements that are just factually incorrect about this. I am not in the employ of wargaming nor am I under any obligations to Wargaming to say only what they want me to say or what they want to say. Quite the opposite, actually. I, along with all the other official CCs, we are perfectly free and entitled to say whatever we want, as long as we do so in a professional manner. And without seeking to purposely harm Wargaming without valid reason or just cause. Therefore, if I think something is wrong and I think something is not right, I am perfectly entitled to say that. Wargaming can't prevent me from doing that. Now, that doesn't mean that I or the other CCs are some form of wargaming stooge, which appears to be what a lot of people think. It just means that we're expected to do whatever we can to positively promote the game where we can and to help the entire Blitz community without passion or prejudice. Now I say this because I know and I fully expect to be chastised by some of those who will watch this video. 
as they will think I am flying Wargaming's flag or something, which is certainly not the case. I am going to just tell you exactly what I believe to be the case, nothing more. And I have even, I mean, I'm even going to post the patent document that everybody is sort of referring to. The document that has created such a storm. So you yourselves can go out there, read it and draw your own conclusions from it. So what is a patent? It's important that we look at that first. It seems that most of the hubbub recently relates to a document called a patent. And before we all start pointing fingers in various directions, it's actually useful to understand what a patent actually is, what the purpose of a patent is, and what it all means. Now, a patent is basically a form of protected intellectual property, and it relates to an invention of something that is totally new and unique. Now, patterns differ from other types of intellectual property, such as copyright. Now, copyright relates to artistic works, such as this video, for example, and music, novels, artwork, and the such. The thing about copyright is that it's automatically applied as soon as the artistic works are released. And there are numerous laws that instantly offer legal protection to the original artist. And there's no actual requirement to register that copyright. Not really. Patents, on the other hand, offer no such protection. The inventor actually needs to apply legally and obtains the patent or some in, in or in some jurisdictions formally applies under what is termed patent pending. Now the reasoning behind this is that in order to patent something, it has to be completely new and totally unique. It's got to be something that nobody has ever invented or come up with before. And therefore the test for obtaining a patent is quite strict. In, in fact, it's one of the strictest out there when it comes to intellectual property. Look, I'm a lawyer by trade, so I, I know a little bit about this stuff. Now, most patent applications attempt to cover every possible scenario in order to gain the protection required under law. There is no point in applying for a patent on something overtly restrictive because then this would allow others to change minor aspects of the original invention and then patent it themselves. Therefore, you generally find that patent applications seek to provide the widest possible scenario in order for the inventor to cover every potential scenario going forward. Aside from this, just because an invention or something is patented doesn't mean that is exactly what you will get or what will be applied. The patent merely covers the thinking, the mechanics and the invention behind the idea and then grants legal protection to the patent owner in order to ensure that no one can produce the same or similar without legal recourse for a set period of time, which is normally about 20 years after obtaining the patent. Furthermore, just because something or someone obtains a patent, it doesn't mean that the owner is then restricted to only using what is patented. The patent owner is free to change, alter and amend what they patented. They own it um, within the scope of the patent and they will still benefit from the legal protection granted therein. There are no rules that state what is patented is exactly what must be issued, used or implemented. So just remember that. Now let's have a look at Wargaming's patent. This is it. There is a link below, so you can all go and read it yourself. It is a publicly available document like all patents need to be. This is the document that's creating so much drama. Now let's start at the beginning. All patents, as I say, are freely available and within the public domain. Obviously they have to be because you need to know what is out there before you go out and invent something anyway. Because if you don't know what's patented, the chances are you're going to start breaking law left, right and centre. So 
these things are free and in the public domain. They're not hidden away surreptitiously. And um, that's the thing you need to work out here. Because I've heard that, well, you know, oh, Wargaming would have tried to hide this. They've not tried to hide anything. This is in the public domain, guys. Anybody can get their hands on this. It's not been hidden. It's not been sort of brushed under the table or whatever. Okay. So you have to know that it's freely available. The other thing to know is that this patent was formally applied for long before the game World of Tanks or World of Tanks Blitz was even released. Now, some may question that as World of Tanks was officially released, apparently, in 2009, whereas this patent is dated 2012. Actually, the 2012 date is the application to the US Patent Office. Okay, now the game World of Tanks was initially released in the CIS, and it was only released in 20, 2009 to the CIS. It was released on the NA and EU servers in 2011, in fact, very late in 2011. And as such, there's, it's quite possible that a Russian patent was sought prior to this US patent, okay? Different jurisdictions require different patents. <laughs> you have to remember that. The US patent doesn't cover the entire world. It covers the US, okay? So remember that, guys. Just because this one is dated 2012, and the game came out in 2011 in the in in in, in, in you know for all intents and purposes, there could have been a Russian patent applied for prior to that. However, we're talking about Blitz. I'm not talking about what PC here. Now, Blitz didn't hit or wasn't released officially until 2014, two years after this patent. Okay. Now, two years is a long time in the gaming industry, and within that period. It's highly likely that the details of the MM that applied at that time, 2012, to the World of Tanks PC um, platform, it changed and probably underwent numerous changes, um, including the dynamic MM, the very thing that the US patent covers. Yes, yes, yes. On the face of it, the US patent appears to carry some characteristics that appear to manipulate the MM overall. However, you need to remember that when Blitz was initially released, the actual MM for the game was plus two, minus two. Okay, so you could go out in a tier eight and be put into a tier 10 game, or you could go out in a tier eight and put, be put into a tier six game. We don't have that anymore, okay? That was something that was changed quite some time back. Furthermore, there used to be something called preferential MM, which is also mentioned in this US patent, and it also has been discussed at length in Drudel's recent video, or so I'm told. Now, yes, it is totally correct that Blitz once had preferential MM on recently purchased premium tanks and on recently unlocked tech tree tanks. But this was abandoned. Wargaming changed that MM quite some time back. There are, if my memory serves me correctly, one or possibly two premium tanks, both in the low tiers, by the way, that still have preferential MM. But aside from those tanks, it is my understanding that there is no preferential MM currently active in Blitz. Okay, so despite the recent comment that there is preferential MM, this was got rid of, it's, it's been removed, and it doesn't exist in Blitz anymore. So what was it? Well, preferential MM used to grant you top tier status in the first 10 battles in a new tank, in order to allow the player to get used to the tank in a more friendly gaming environment. This is actually referred to in the patent document. So if we scroll down the document, I'm only taking little parts of this document, by all means go out there and read it yourself. A lot of it is is no longer really relevant and, and a, there's a lot of technical jargon about the algorithm and stuff. But this is the part that deals with premium tanks and I'll just zoom in so you can see. Okay, it says premium vehicles typically typically have advanced capabilities compared to other vehicles of similar tiers 
and may be allowed only into a lower range of battles than standard vehicles of a similar tier level, thereby encouraging users to obtain premium vehicles. That is preferential MM, okay? And that used to apply a lot in Blitz, but it was changed a while ago. And it used to give you this preferential MM for the first 10 battles, okay? Now, Wargaming abandoned it, as I said. Um, and I think there's only one or maybe two tanks that still have preferential MM, both of which are in the low tiers. So don't read into this thinking, oh my God, all premium tanks have preferential MM, because it's just not true. The other thing about Wargaming's 2012 patent is that whilst it details aspects of the MM and what that system will do, the overall intention of that patent document, because it's a legal document, was to gain legal protection for what is termed a dynamic smart MM system. It says, dynamic battle section, match making in a multiple player game. And the abstract says, a video game such as a vehicle based combat game may include multiple types of vehicles where each type of vehicle may progress through increasingly tier levels. Different types of vehicles within the same tier may have different capabilities, strengths and weaknesses. When performing matchmaking for a game session, a matchmaking server may be use, may use a battle level table defining permission, permissible tiers of each type of vehicle allowed within a particular battle level and may also limit the number of specific type of vehicle allowed in any one game session. The battle table may provide an advantage to premium vehicles by limiting the tiers of the other vehicles against which a summarily tiered and premium vehicle may compete. Battle level difficulty may be adjusted by adjusting the ranges of permissible vehicles in each battle level. That, that's, that's basically MM in a nutshell, okay? It says we're going to pick X amount of tanks within this parameter and shove them into a battle. We're going to make sure that, you know, one team doesn't have all heavies and the other team have all light tanks. We're going to try and balance it out. Well, I would argue, yeah, quite, quite a large proportion of it probably still applies in all actuality. If I, if I scroll back up to this, oh, sorry, scroll down to this fig, figure nine, this is effectively what the MM is meant to do, okay? And this, I, I firmly believe, still exists. And that is basically what the MM is. That's what the algorithm is meant to be doing. You're meant to be, you, as soon as you press the battle button, then the algorithm and the mechanics behind that then kicks in, determines where you should be put. Are you, you know, is your tank this tier, that tier, this class, that class? And it allocates accordingly. And when it's got the right allocations, it sticks you into a room and you start the battle, okay? That's basically what the MM is. And in that, in a nutshell, is, is what it still is. So I would argue that, you know, we still have this, guys. This is how the MM still works and it's still probably termed dynamic MM. Now, a lot has been made of what is actually termed a battle level. Well, what does it actually mean? Well, according to the US patent, a battle level is actually a secondary consideration. Battle level. Okay, and as you can see, it's sort of staggered. So if you go into a tier one tank, light tanks are battle level one and two. Um, here, mediums are two and three. S SPGs, which we don't have in Blitz, are three, four, and five. Tank destroyers are three, four, and five as well. And it staggers, okay? So the MM algorithm is meant to sort of pick accordingly. And you can see that. It's got nothing to do with the actual player. It's to do with the tank and the class of tank. And that's what this battle level is, okay? So you need to remember that part. Now we'll look into more detail into this. So what exactly is a battle level? Well, this is the wording of the patent. The battle level can be determined based on the vehicles in the queue, e.g. a battle level into which a majority of the queue is eligible. 
based on a sequential process of creating battle sessions of incrementing or decrementing battle levels, or based on any other desired criteria. The method of selecting the battle level is secondary to the assignment of the battle level to a particular session. So you have to go back to that figure that we just showed with the staggers. You have to take into account that light tanks are considered lower than heavy tanks. So the battle level isn't about the player, it's about the tank. Okay, so they try to, they, they say we've got this many tanks in, in uh, queuing up for tier 10 and, and in tier 9. We will assign them accordingly. So we'll put a tier we'll put a tier ten light tank in this queue in this in in this um, battle session on team A, and we'll give them a tier nine heavy. So the thing is, when you're looking at battle level, you have to take into account the chart that we saw earlier, but also this part of it. Now it says here, with reference to figure eight, which is the battle level variable, may be defined herein referred to as range variable n. That defines the number of battle sessions that a vehicle must participate in before the vehicle may be assigned to the highest possible battle level within its allowable range of battle levels. So each tank has, a, each class of tank has a, the range, okay? And it goes on like this. And basically, if I move across, it shows you here. Thus, in a first battle with a particular vehicle, a player might only be placed in the lowest battle level of the allowed range. Each successive battle with that vehicle, then the range of available battle levels may increase until the full range defined is encompassed. For example, using tier 4 SPG vehicles, table 1 illustrates that for each battle session that a player uses a particular tier 4 SPG, the available range of battle levels into which that vehicle may be placed is from one all the way down to eight and then 10. So it's more than what you think, okay? And it's not just a case of, oh, you've won too many battles. It's the more you play that tank, then this happens. However, it says the information presented in figure eight is illustrative only and may change. From time to time therefore it's not fixed this is not exactly how the algorithm works it's an illustration only and there are other aspects to it that we realistically do not know and you have to appreciate this is a very old document and back in those days it was only you know they only had heavy tanks at tier 10 now we have lights and everything so a lot has happened since then and you have to take that into account so the battle level isn't about the player. It's, it's about a staggering criteria attached to the class of tank, okay? Now, this would have been incredibly applicable back in the day of plus two, minus two MM, something we no longer have. And I would argue it's still applicable now because, you know, when you're trying to assign tier eight tanks into a tier nine game, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then yeah, it, 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 it becomes an issue on, you know, how do you assign that tier eight tank into a tier nine battle, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, the algorithm probably does retain aspects of this battle level to that extent. And it, it's there not to penalize, but to try and balance out the MM when you're being up tiered or bottom tiered, okay? So it's not necessarily shooting you in the foot. Jumping down to the pertinent part of the document, this is what everybody's getting into a tiz was about. Now the wording of the patent, which you've got there, states the MM server may store a win-loss percentage. Now the critical word there is may, not will. May means we may do, we may not. Will means we definitely will, okay? It's a definite certainty. So whilst with that word may, it covers a wide variety of things. It is incredibly ambiguous, that word. Now, if they'd used the word will, then definitely yes, win and loss are stored. This is done on purpose. It's done in order to give flexibility to the creator 
to either implement it or not in any given situation. Now, just because it is mentioned, it doesn't mean it's actually implemented or that it even forms part of the dynamic, dynamic MM system or algorithm. Nevertheless, where I read further, this part of the system actually appears to be rather fair and reasonable insofar as it goes on in states. If a player has been placed in too many difficult battles, the balancing is done in favour of easier battle sessions, thereby encouraging by providing an easier game environment and vice versa. And that's exactly what it says here. Now, what is that? What does that mean? Well, from my side, that seems perfectly practical. So, for example, you may find yourself jumping into a battle where you're always bottom tier. Those, therefore, are challenging battles. When you're bottom tier, you're going to be challenged more. Okay, think about it. If you if you're pressing, if you're in a tier seven tank and you're constantly being put into a tier eight battle. The odds are against you. You know, you need your skills and your wits about you to try and win those battles. You may not. So after a while, the MM algorithm may kick in and say, well, we put this tank, this guy, this player, or whatever you want to say, into too many bottom tiered battles. It's time to switch that and stick him into top tier battles. It's perfectly reasonable. I don't see any problem with that. You know, I mean, it just seems totally practical to me. I mean, it don't, it doesn't appear on the face of it, nor can I see any reference in this document to suggest that an individual player will be penalised for playing well. It just merely presents the player with a greater challenge, which is the whole purpose of a game. The game is meant to challenge you. So it's not saying we're going to rig the MM against you. What it's saying is, you know, you may be put in a queue whereby you are bottom tier majority of the time. And if you're struggling, we'll stick you back to top tier. Perfectly practical, perfectly normal. So does this all mean that the MM is actually rigged? Ultimate question, yeah? Well, let's have a look at it logically. Players will always look for reasons for losing. And because the actual algorithm of the MM, owned by Wall and Gaming, is commercially sensitive, we as players will never fully know how the MM actually works. This document gives us an insight of what it could be like, not what it actually is, okay? We can view this document to our, to our leisure, but it's, it's 10 years old. Okay, in 10 years is a very long time in, in an industry. I mean, two years is a long time. Four years is a long time in the gaming industry. And, you know, we can look at this very outdated document and point fingers and say, yes, the MM is rigged and it's totally against us. I don't believe that, personally. Um, I can't believe that it's... I, I, don't, I can't... I say can't. I don't believe it's rigged either for or against me or any other player. Yeah, okay, it feels like the MM is totally against me. But upon reflection of the teams, I can see that sometimes my team is meant to lose. You, know, we're, I'm, you put in a team that is outclassed by the other team. However, I've been in situations whereby we've won, okay? Even though it seems like these, the odds are stacked against you. That, to me, suggests that more to it than just bad MM skill comes in luck comes in and things like that also come into play the mm system that blitz or wargaming whatever you want to call it has employed has always been attacked by many players and actually quite a few people have done studies or undertaken studies to see a smoking gun and say yes the mm is 100 percent rigged because here's the proof now, most of these studies involve a player doing 100 games and then attempting to draw a conclusion from those results. The thing is, sometimes these studies can be flawed and it depends on how the experiment is actually conducted. I mean, ideally, you need a baseline in order to you know, work out 
your start position. Without a baseline, then whatever you do is meaningless. And then you need to roll out in, say, 100 battles in one particular tank in order to get that baseline. And I would argue that you'd need to go out in like a mid-tier tank, maybe a tier 8 tech tree tank first to get your baseline. Then you go need to roll out in similar tier, premium tank to get your baseline. And then you need to sort of fluctuate around it. But on top of that, you also need varying skill levels. So it's no good if you are a 70% win rate player doing this exercise, because you also then need to employ a 45% win rate player to do exactly the same thing in order to cross-reference to see, you know, is it this or is it this? And that will only give you a basic understanding, but you need to set those baselines first in order to do an in-depth study. Because once you get the baseline, you then need to roll out in equal amounts in various other tiers and other tanks and other types and classes of tanks and compare all those stats, etc., etc. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's a massive undertaking. I've kind of done a similar experiment back in the day that was undertaken actually by Every Good Name Is Taken. And at the end of the exercise, it, it, was, it was actually the... the, the the data was showing it was more balanced rather than unbalanced. Yet when I played it, it felt like I was losing more than I was winning, which wasn't the case. I mean, it was a very balanced overall and the teams were very balanced. You had the occasional imbalance, but you know, I would say 70% of the time the teams were balanced according to the data I had. Now, as I said, it's a flawed study because we didn't do baselines, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. We just played 100 games and compared. And you can't really do that. You need a baseline first. So it's an interesting exercise. Quite a few people have done it. And if you've got the time, you've got the energy and the inclination, but by all means, do it for yourself and check the data yourself. You may be surprised. But the thing is that is standard gaming practice. Okay, the virtual games have that kind of algorithm whereby you will be put into challenging scenarios and if they're too challenging you'll be put down into less challenging scenarios and not only that people will always see what they want to see okay that's just human nature if i want to see that the mm is against me then there's nothing that anybody can tell me i will believe that the mm is against me if i feel in i i strongly feel that the RNG is against me, then I nothing you will tell me will change my view. It's the same as when I drive down the road, if I feel that every single traffic light is against me, then it's a conspiracy that all the traffic lights are against me. We see what we want to see doesn't necessarily make it so, is all I'm trying to say. So, big question, is Drudels correct? Well, as I said, this video is not here to say whether or not Droodles is right or wrong. I have no opinion on that at all. At the end of the day, Droodles is entitled to his opinion and he's entitled to form his own views. Now, if he feels that the MM is rigged, that's totally his call. And it's not for me to say otherwise. All I would say is that upon my reading of the US patent, there is no smoking gun that firmly points and squarely points at the MM being rigged or some other kind of underhanded tactics that penalises or otherwise is a detriment to players. That's not to say the MM is perfect, however, because clearly it's not. But I, I, I cannot sit there and say, yeah, you know what, that's a smoking gun. This clearly proves the MM is rigged because it... it, it clearly doesn't it's it's a lot more complex than that so what's the overall conclusion here well guys look it's easy to jump to any conclusions that you want now if you want to find a reason to explain your poor performance in a game without actually looking at your own performance then you will certainly find those reasons you can blame the mm you can blame rng you can blame server lag in fact the list is endless on the things that you can blame for you not playing well. And when you don't, when, when you have a bad game, I would argue that the first port of call is look at you first. Is there something you could have done that could have changed the outcome of the battle? Did you make a mistake? Did you do something stupid? 
Because nine times out of ten, it's it's you at, at fault. You know, it's it's not the team and it's not the those around you. Sometimes you just screw up. Now I'm not saying the MM is perfect, because nothing is, and the MM in War in World of Tanks Blitz is clearly not perfect. But to say that the MM hasn't been tinkered with is actually palpably wrong, because it has been tinkered with quite a lot. As I say, we used to have plus two, minus two MM. We used to have preferential MM. So to assert that Wargaming have never tinkered with the MM is just wrong. It's, it's just not right, because it has been tinkered with considerably, funnily enough. We will never know fully, okay? Because it is a trade secret. Wargaming are not going to give us all their trade secrets. That's the reason for this patent document. This patent document covers every possible scenario. And it's up to Wargaming to do whatever they want within that document as to their algorithm and the, the MM servers. And it's, you know, we're just never going to fully know. Because to do so opens the ball opens the game and the ball part for other competitors to come in and do the same thing effectively the other thing you need to remember is this this us patent document is not something that has been hidden away in fact it's been publicly available ever since it was issued in 2012. this is not something that wargaming has attempted to hide in fact it's been referred to on numerous occasions since 2013 by numerous people on numerous platforms and it really does raise its head every now and then. To say that no one's ever referred to this, no one's ever looked into this, and no one's ever argued this document before is, again, just not right, I'm afraid, because lots of people have. May not be on YouTube, but there's been this has been doing the rounds on various forums, both World of Tanks PC and Blitz, for quite some time now. The thing is, it's a legal document. Okay, and things contained in legal documents are not always what they appear to be. People always jump to conclusions without really understanding the true meaning behind the document or what it's designed to do or what is contained therein. These kind of documents are almost entirely drafted by highly experienced lawyers. And as a lawyer myself, you really have to be careful when you're trying to apply meaning to these things especially meaning to words because words especially in the common law jurisdictions such as the united states and england and wales are subject to virtually every single legal argument out there and even when they appear to be unambiguous and precise quite often they're not those precise words whilst appearing unambiguous are incredibly ambiguous the thing is, lawyers train for a long, long time to understand how the law should be interpreted and applied. And they train even longer in getting the experience in applying these processes, rules and applications. I'm a lawyer of 20 years myself, and I can assure you, not everything is what it appears to be. Okay, there's a lot of argument and hidden things behind the meaning. And taking a random, well, it's not random, taking a legal document and trying to find meaning in that and apply it fully is, is just, it's not the way to do it. Because as I've shown you, when you've got things like this innocuous word, may, that, that is incredibly ambiguous. Because may is not will. May is not definitive. May is not definite. It is, mm, I may do it, or I may not do it. Whereas, will is certain. Will is definite. So you have to be very careful in the way you interpret these things. As I said, though, this is not to say that that person's wrong, this person's right. Everybody is entitled to their own opinions. Anyway, I've been Fuji. I've not really dug into the real deepness of the matchmaker here. And I don't intend to, because I, I, I will never know, okay, unless I do an in-depth study and in-depth this and in-depth that. All I can do is tell you about this document, and it's not what you think it is, okay. So take these things with a pinch of salt, 
if you believe that the MM is rigged, then you believe the MM is rigged. Nothing I will tell you or I will discuss here will change your opinion. If you believe that there's something going on, you'll believe there's something going on. There's nothing I can do that's going to change that view. All I'm saying is, guys, be rational about these things. Try to look at things objectively and don't, don't be eager to jump on a bandwagon. Okay. Yes, the MM isn't perfect. Yes, you will get bad teams. Yes, you will roll out in terrible games. But, you know, what are you after? Easy games or challenging games? I mean, I don't understand. All I can say is this. I can't see any smoking gun here that says that the MM is rigged either for or against and that players are penalised because they play well. I don't, I don't see that. But anyway, I've been Fuji. I'd love to see your comments on this. Sorry it's been a lengthy video, but it was needed, really. Anyway, guys, look. That's my take on this document. Not the MM as such. Just this document. So I can't wait to see your comments, to be fair. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. So until the next time, stay safe out there, guys. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, it's just a game. And like all games, it's designed to keep you entertained, be fun, and make you happy.